Hi everyone, my name's Lawrence Hooker and I'm a technical consultant here at Excitec. In this video we'll be taking a look at what's new in Revit Architecture 2019. As part of this we'll also look at some of the platform changes that have happened to Revit itself. So let's get going with some of the platform changes first. First thing I'd like to show you now is if you click on the open tool, let's go and browse to some of the sample files, you'll now notice that when we select these Revit projects, we actually see the file version alongside the preview, which can be very useful. Now that's not just for Revit projects, that will also be for content or family files as well. So if I go into our metric library here and I open up uh, some of the content in here, again, when I pick on these RFA files, you'll see that the file version is now displayed in the preview window. So moving into another thing here, we have something now called tabbed views. This is long overdue in Revit and something that's been implemented incredibly well. So as an example, if I go into my project browser and I open up a new view, uh, so you can see here I've got the O2 floor open. I'll also open up a ceiling plane as well with the same uh, floor. So now we've got O2 floor ceiling. You'll now notice that we have tabs across the top. Of course, this makes it really easy to be able to switch between the active views and also to close one down if I don't want it open. But what I really like about this is if I wanted to put this on a second screen, I can just tear this tab away like so, and I can drag that onto the second screen and maximize it, which is quite useful. You'll also see, of course, just to simulate this on this one screen setup, uh, if I maximize that, this is the sort of appearance you would now have on that screen. So really quite useful. Uh, if you want to tab it, you just put it back into the tabs across the top there, and you can see there it goes. And of course, you can use this to reorder views and so on. Also, if you click on the view ribbon here and on the Windows panel, you'll now see that we've got a, a few more new implementations. So for example, if I go to tile views, to go back to the tabbed views, you'll now see I've got a button here called tab views. Yeah. And again here, um, I can close in active views quite quickly, which will shut down all of those uh, tabs. So uh, an easy change to implement into Revit, but incredibly useful uh, when you get working with this. Again, another simple change is the ability now to rename views in the project browser just with a slow double click. So what does that mean? Well, you can see I've got O2 floor uh, highlighted here. If I do another click over that, I can now directly uh, rename this. So I could call this one, for example, second floor. Yeah. So again, small little change there, but uh, very, very useful. Uh, previously, of course, we'd have to have right moused over that and hit rename. So quite nice. Uh, the other thing that has been implemented there as well, which um, again, a lot of people wondered why it wasn't there to start with, is the ability to highlight a view and just press F2 yeah, to, to rename that. So quite useful. The next feature actually came out in later releases of 2018, but it's worth including in this video. Um, if we go down and have a look at schedules quantities here, what we can now do is right mouse click over that and go to browser organization. So what this enables us to do is organize the schedules. And in larger projects, this used to become a little bit uncontrollable. So what we can now do, for example, is I can create a new organization in here and I could just type in room schedules, for example, like so. Uh, what we can then do is start to group and sort it by specific things. So in here, for example, I could go to category um, and then I could go by perhaps uh, the view name. So now if I click OK here and make sure that that room schedule is active, you can now see that we have subfolders for all of our various different categories. And of course, if I want to see all my room schedules, I could just go ahead and open those up. So again, small little change there, but incredibly useful for larger projects. Okay, let's go ahead and open up a 3D view now. And what I'd like to do is again show you just a couple of changes that have happened with 3D views. First one's quite useful is this. You can now very easily switch between uh, different views. So for example, if I wanted to go from orthographic to perspective, I can do a very simple right click over the view cube here and then just go into perspective view. Yep. So previously we'd have had to have created, of course, a camera view uh, to do that. But you can now see just a very simple case of just doing a right mouse and you can switch between those two views. Another interesting implementation here is the ability to see levels in 3D space. So if I now go into visibility graphics, uh, we'll go and find some levels in here, switch them on. Yep. You'll now see that we have levels within the model. Now let me zoom into these over here. Uh, 
the heads, the level heads can be toggled on and off, so they're actually over this side. And here we are, we can now see those levels being shown. Um, it has exactly the same functionality as it would do in a, a standard sort of elevation view or section view. You can see here that we can switch uh, to floor planes very easily just by double clicking those in 3D space. So that's quite interesting. Um, we can also physically change the um, elevation in here just by simply uh, typing a new value in here. Uh, we can rename it, all of the usual things you'd expect. So another interesting thing is if I draw a wall in here, for example, so let's go ahead and draw uh, a block work wall in here. Um, we'll just draw this up unconnected for the minute. Let's sketch a wall in across here. If I select the wall, you can see I've got my shape handles in here, but as I start to drag these, can you actually see that it's snapping in to those levels? Yeah, so now we come up to the next one, like the parapet level at the top. So that makes it really easy to sort of just manually pull these up and also better than constrain those walls to those levels. So quite a useful little change there. Still keeping on the theme of 3D views, what I'm going to do now is open up um, another uh, perspective view in here. Uh, let's just go ahead and uh, shade this view. So we'll just use realistic for this. Okay. One of the useful things now is you can crop and uncrop uh, perspective views. So you can see here, if I just take the crop off down the bottom here, you'll see now we go to a full view. Again, if I want to crop that back, uh, we can click on that and it changes. So quite nice, uh, quite nice and easy now to go between these two different views. So I'd like to show you some of the new materials now. Let's select the floor slab and have a look. So you now see that we have new materials in here. So if I start to have a look through the thumbnails here, you'll now see that we've got this little symbol down here. Okay. So as an example, let's go to appearance. And what we'll do is we'll swap out uh, or replace one of these assets. So if we do this, these you'll see in here, all these materials um, are our newer materials. If I just uh, increase the size of our uh, thumbnails for us. So let's go ahead and go to... Um, slightly larger icons in here. If I scroll down, you'll see that these are the older materials, the ones with the little yellow uh, symbol here, and these are the new materials. So let's go ahead and search for carpet in here. Okay, so here we are. And you can now see that we've got a whole new range of different materials in here. So perhaps we'll go ahead and look at one of these ones. So I can just double click that. That will put that back into here. And then we can say OK and OK again. And there's our new uh, material added into the model, quite useful. Again, staying on the theme of materials, if I go back into the materials now, we'll just do this via the manage ribbon, we could now have two actual hatch patterns. So you'll see here that I've got two surface patterns that I can use. I've got a foreground and a background surface pattern, as well as cut patterns, foreground and background. So as an example, uh, for a cut pattern, we might say, right, but okay, I want to use the brickwork pattern for that. But then if I go to a background, I might want to use a, a solid fill and then have some sort of a shade with in that so of course what's going to now happen is just the brickwork will then have that kind of uh, sort of pinkish shade underneath the hatch pattern without having to go into a shady view which is what we would have had to have done in the past so again quite a useful little change there so let's now take a look at some filters so if we go into visibility graphics and I just select filters here um, I'm going to show you first the, this filter I've already built up. Now, what I wanted to do here was just show the instructional classrooms um, on the model. Now, the problem is in this model, we've got computer labs, which are instructional classrooms and the classrooms themselves. So what I'm able to now do in the new release is I can say, well, let's get all the rooms that have a name that does not equal instructions or a name that does not equal computer lab. Now, that's the new functionality. So what happens here is if we want to add more rules in here, we can add a rule which would add an AND statement in, or we can say add a set, and then in the new set, I could say OR or AND in there. So that's quite useful, and that allows us to do much more um, efficient filtering. Okay, then let's move on to some ratings now. So we have a functionality now of being able to split ratings. So I'm going to demonstrate this on the site plan. And what we're going to do is we're going to use another new feature from Revit 2018.2, uh, which is a point release, just to show you that uh, ratings can now be hosted onto topographic surveys as well. So before we get going, what we're going to do is open up um, 
a file here and grab some more railings. So let's go into system families. Let's open up fencing in this case. And what we'll do is we'll grab some fencing from this model. So perhaps we want uh, that one there and perhaps this one here. So we can copy those to the clipboard. See how much easier it is with these tabs up over the top and we'll paste those in the model. Okay, so that's those new styles brought in. Um, now that we've got those, we can actually now draw um, some fencing in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and sketch the boundary. So we'll sketch the outline of this. And we'll just come down through there and finish. Uh, if we go ahead and look in 3D now, you can see all the fencing is obviously uh, going through the topography. So I can select the fencing, pick a new host, yeah, pick the topo. And you'll see that then the, the uh, fencing layout is actually hosted on top of the topography, which is quite useful. Now, what I might want is to change the fencing in a certain area here for noise abatement uh, fencing. So we can go to modify. Uh, we can now do split element. So I'm going to split the element uh, on this post here. And we'll do the same up on this corner. Like so. Okay, so then obviously I can select this section of fencing that I've split out and then swap it out for perhaps the feather lap fencing. Yep. So nice and easy to do. Um, you can see very effective as well. And obviously you can use that whenever you've got railings. So that could be um, stairs or you know just railings that you've sketched as you see me do here. Okay, so there's some of the uh, most prominent changes for Revit 2019. Thank you very much.